going live in a moment. As usual, I can see comments on Facebook at the end of the stream, but I cannot see them on YouTube. Uh, but I'll read them afterwards if you post on the video. Hi! It is Fundum Friday. I'm Alex Glow, your host on Hackster.io, and we have some mystery packages from Crowdsupply. If you're not familiar, Crowdsupply is an excellent place where you can fund and uh, get your hands on cool new hardware projects from all kinds of awesome makers like yourself and hardware developers. So there's some really advanced stuff on here. I'm a, look at this reflow air machine. Cool. You don't have to use a hot plate anymore. Oh, that'd be fantastic. I have some guesses about what's in this um, based on what Daryl has told me already, but I'm not sure what all it is. Um, there's a number of things that it could be. So. Uh, oh, look at this. Hestia Pie Touch. That looks really cool. Anyway, um, without further ado, let's open these up and have a look at what's inside. Pull out my little multi tool here. Uh, should I go for the little one or the big one first? I want to go for the little one because good things come in small packages. And I like the idea of sort of squaring that away at the beginning. Let's not cut towards my face. That's there. thank you. Okay. And what do we got here? Ooh, we've got a tiny Pico. Oh, this is the like development ready version. Cool. Look, it has a little uh, JST connector in here already to be attached. I'm doing this un like upside down for the first time. Uh, one of the first times uh, this week. So it's. Uh, a little bit more awkward than usual, but wow, this is super tiny. Oh, wow. Well. Come out of there, little, little connector. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. <laughs> okay, so we've got some really exciting silica gel. <laughs> it's not even in focus. Some really exciting out of focus silica gel. <laughs> we've got a couple of long headers. We've got, ooh, they've wedged themselves in. Uh, next to the antenna with its cool little 3D printed support so it doesn't get squashed during shipping. That's pretty cool. Uh, some uh, mail headers as well. A large and small JST connector. My guess is that that depends on what uh, your battery looks like. So if you want to run it off of a LiPo, you have a decision on what to solder to your board. That's my guess. Let's have a look. Um, oh yeah, two sets of male headers so you can have it be male or female. It's cool that it comes with all of this. So let's see. Oh yeah, here's your uh, JST soldering connection on the back. Oh, this is just this is just not as good right now as my previous setup was, so maybe I'll have to move it back. Come on, get into focus. Oh, this is so frustrating. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Finally in focus. Uh, you can see the tiny Pico label on there. Oh, <laughs> the JST connector, uh, your little chip there, what is that? Lion Tech, LY68L or something like that, 6400S. Uh, underneath the little 3D printed holder here, it says tinypico.com. Um, and it is incredibly tiny as its name suggests. There we go. <laughs> ah! You know what? I'm just going to manually focus this. Thanks for bearing with me. And here we go. Yeah, how about that? Mm. So we've got a ton of pins on here. And uh, let's pull up the page for this. I actually did not anticipate this one. But you can see on here we've got an Espressive chip. ESP32. And uh, so it's got some... Some nice Wi-Fi on there. Nice. Yeah, let's take a look at our window and we'll pull up the tiny Pico. <laughs> a tiny, mighty ESP32 development board by Unexpected Maker. So the deal with this one, um, 
as we've said on the blog, <laughs> is that you can easily fit Tiny Pico into even the smallest projects in order to gain all the benefits of the ESP32. So, for example, you might be familiar with the Node MCU board, which has an ESP32 but is about yay big, maybe about as big as an Adafruit feather board, and uh, this is much smaller than that. In fact, I might have a feather board right here. Let me see. For comparison, uh, or you know what? I might have an ESP32 here actually. But I'd have to dig it out. Um, just rest assured that this is much, much smaller. And so small! And you can kind of see from the, uh, the pitch on the headers, pins. Um, so this one also has onboard management, battery management as the LiPo connectors suggest. Uh, so that's pretty exciting! So they designed the smallest uncompromising ESP32 development board in the world and then went a step further and gave it four megs of extra RAM and onboard RGB LED. Ooh, and more juice with a 700 milliamp 3.3 volt regulator. Then they made some shields for it. Really? Oh my goodness. Oh, this is very exciting. Uh, there's a play shield with a little OLED on it. Is there two or just one? One. Yeah, okay, yeah, on the bottom is where the tiny pico goes, and you would use the mail headers on here for to plug it into that, it looks like. 128 by 64 white OLED, a three-axis accelerometer, a light sensor, mono amplifier for audio, I'm assuming, maybe? Wait, no. Hmm. Uh, wait, yeah, magnetic buzzer. Where is that? Maybe it's underneath the OLED there. Uh, blue LED, four input buttons and a reset button, a LiPo connector, and a power switch. Um, but, 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 there's an audio shield. Ah, oh, cool! That's exciting. Um, there's a trim pot for gain control so you can easily affect the sound volume coming out without uh, messing with the code. There's a little uh, pinout for an external speaker there, fantastic, as well as the built in magnetic buzzer, so it looks really easy to test with. Uh, and really easy to get audio out. This is exciting. I have a lot of trouble getting um, audio stuff to work on Arduino, depending on what I'm trying to do, and uh, that could be really cool. RTC, so a, a real-time clock shield, so that you can keep your stuff going all the time. Uh, as with, you know, many electronic devices, if you open them up, they'll have a little coin cell battery holder in there, even though uh, they have power through another source, and that's just to keep the clock going, so you can have that for your project. Um, <laughs> Do calendar and alarm stuff. Exciting. Um, and then they have the pinouts for all of these shown. Very beautiful. A Grove R uh, I squared C shield for all your Grove modules from Seed. Uh, and you can fit three of them on here, it looks like, which is fantastic. Uh, so Grove modules are uh, these interchangeable actuators and sensors that all have this generic connector which allows you to very easily connect all kinds of sensors and things without worrying about how exactly to um, wire them up. And then Seed has a library for this that will enable you, uh, for Arduino at least, to make uh, it very easy for you to control these. A proto shield for prototyping, a three up shield so that you can uh, do three shields on a single tiny pico I guess. Wow, fantastic. Oh, can I, a tiny Pico and two other shields. Okay, yeah. Nice. And it comes with a 3D printed base for it to sit on. Oh, this is so cool. So heat. Da -da -da. Okay. So you don't have to do anything too bad about that. But yeah, okay. Oh, all right. So I'm spending a lot of time on this and it's very cool. But I'll have to come out, back to it another day. We should move on to the other box we have here, which it has my elbow on it. <laughs> And zoom out a little bit, or refocus. There we go. All right, let's see what's up next. Let's put all of your bits and pieces back together because I don't want to harm you. So stick this back on here. It just slots in underneath the antenna. Fantastic. It's even blue. I keep meaning to get started with ESP32 uh, boards and I never get around to it, uh, so hopefully this will change that. It looks perfect for wearable tech because it has a LiPo connector and is also extremely tiny. Maybe some smart jewelry. We'll find out. Mm -mm. Now onto the big box 
what does it contain? I have no clue. I mean, I thought I knew, but then uh, uh, that one was a kind of a surprise, even though I now remember him telling me about it. Oh, I see pneumatic tubes. You know what that means? That means programmable air. I ran into Amitabh of Programmable Air at Maker Fair, who had an amazing booth with some really cool demos that we're going to look at in just a second. Oh, look, a battery or a power cable with a little name tag connector on it. I wonder why. How much is this? 12 volts, 1.5 amps. I think this is for the uh, programmable air as well. We'll talk about this in just a second. Oh, and it comes with a whole, a whole little set of things. Oh, we're gonna have so much fun with this. Oh, I, I have big plans for this already. Yeah, it's, uh, I have two projects in mind for this. And we will, this looks like an onion, so we'll wait on that. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, in here, we have the programmable air set, which is a, what board is on here again? An Arduino Nano V3. And we have a couple of air pumps. And we also have three user controllable LEDs, as well as there's also an, a pressure sensor on here, uh, which is right there, I think. Thump. And then we have these three sort of valves that are controlling things. I think they're valves, but you have these, uh, these buttons here that you can do stuff with as well. So uh, this enables you to make soft robots and things like that. Not just soft robots, but that was the inspiration for Amitabh originally. We'll have to do an interview sometime. That'd be fantastic. Um, especially once I've built whatever silly things I'm going to do. <laughs> um, so some of the examples for programmable air, which is exactly what it sounds like, are a gripper, which I think that's what this is uh, for. So you can make a linear actuator if you pump air into and out of a syringe. You could also use this to control something using the air pressure sensor. Uh, you could inflate or deflate a balloon. You could also use it with a balloon to create, ooh, that's quite sharp, isn't it? Ooh hypodermic needle. Uh, you can use it to create a pick and place machine with vacuum uh, power and you can use it to create a really cool kind of gripper where you feel, fill a balloon or a nylon stocking or whatever with coffee grounds and when it's at neutral sort of air, air pressure then uh, it's just sort of floppy you know but then when you suck it all the air out and create a vacuum then it conforms around whatever object is up next to it. So you'll have this like balloon thing image. I'll just show you the video. <laughs> um, you'll have like a balloon or whatever, uh, and you push a marker into it, and then um, it will conform to that object and pick it up like a universal gripper. Here's that, uh, here's a pick and place demo. Here's the gripper I'm talking about. Yeah! Okay, yeah, on a 3D printed holder. That's exactly what this thing is, I guess. Cool. So the, the air hooks up to this side, and then you've got these perforations on the other side, which pull the air evenly out of your little sack of coffee grounds. Uh, yeah, this is a really cool type of gripper that I've, I love the concept of. You can do uh, pouch actuators, which are, these are some that are designed by Open Soft Machines, which looks like a really cool site uh, that I'm excited to check out sensible, like, I don't know what a McKibben muscle is, but I'm excited to learn. Um, pneumatic pouch motors, motor, hinge type or muscle type, uh, a little jumping tripod robot. Ah, look at it. Caterpillar robot, shape memory alloy. Oh yeah, I guess soft machines also use like knit and all wire or other um, uh, muscle wire. Oh, I'll have to, maybe I'll watch this later on. <laughs> but uh, this this whole project was inspired by this um, project showing a walking and crawling robot from Harvard as featured on IEEE Spectrum. 
Uh, yeah, so that's what inspired the product in the first place. Uh, oh yeah, this is one of the examples that he had at Maker Fair, which is where you push on the little piggy and it makes the LEDs go with the pressure sensor. Uh, one of the other really cool things that he mentions actually is that if you have with, if you just pump, pump it up to the point of 7 psi, pounds per square inch, and you have a 6 by 6 inch pouch, so 36 square inches, 36 square inches times 7 pounds per square inch is 252 pounds, so you can lift that much, aka a person, which is ridiculous. Uh, yeah. And then here's like a really cool crawling critter demo. Haha. <laughs> Yes, I love the look of these things. Some friends of mine are interested get in getting into uh, soft robots and molds and things like that. Um, here's your breathing balloon demo. For example, Barb Noren. Uh, so Barb and I forget who the other uh, octopus person was. I think it might have been Maker Block. Uh, but two people are interested in building familiar robots that use software uh, that are octopi. So I hope that one of them at least uses uh, you know a hydraulic system like, or not hydraulic, a pneumatic system like this. Hydraulics is with like oil and stuff, um, and then uh, pneumatics is with air. Cool. You've got, again, really nice documented with pinouts. Uh, you've got two user programmable buttons as well. Look at that. Cool. So many things. Oh yeah, those are valves. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then you have an expansion port. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. There's a power in, which is that uh, 12 volts, 1.2 amps, for which we have the uh, power source with the barrel jack. That is extremely exciting. I would set this up right now, except that I have to get through a couple other things, and hopefully this weekend I'm going to build some stuff over the long weekend. That'll be really fun. Uh, besides what I already showed you, we've got these little valve connectors, uh, and we've got another little sort of uh, syringe guy. This would be probably for the pick and place and some zip ties. Love little tiny zip ties, they're so adorable. Oh, there were so many cool demos at Maker Faire. Oh. At one point someone put uh, his little muscle, soft robot muscle guy, ah, oh, stickers, inside of a pouch that had been, that David Shorey of Shorey Designs had 3D printed spikes onto, and so when the muscle inflated, then the uh, spikes would would flare up, you know? Oh, I'm running out of space. I'm gonna put it over the Hackster sticker because we don't. That's where we are. I've got this one. Don't need the little one. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. Oh, should I just tell you what my projects for this are? Okay, I have two ideas for this. One of them is a meditation bot where I would 3D print, sort of actually similar to that demo I was just describing uh, with David Shorey's spikes, only it would be like petals on a lotus flower, and then uh, it would sort of guide you to breathe at a certain interval uh, by inflating and deflating, and the lotus flower would open and close. And then uh, the second one, which is much less mature, is, uh, in several ways, is, uh, do you know about wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube men. Anyway, if you uh, if you don't know, you should go look it up. It's those guys that are at, like car dealerships that go, Aah! Anyway, if I had a little notification center uh, on my desk that used those, it would be surprisingly not very noisy, but also adorable and great. So that's, uh, that's idea number two. Cool. And then we've got some extra pneumatic tube here. Yay! Oh, that's so exciting. Okay, it's really like the holidays over here. It's just like, you know, ah, my birthday. I'm gonna print it's my birthday. Okay, oh, we have another tiny Pico. Ooh. I'll have to like do a giveaway at some point because that'd be really cool and it's just not fair for me to have everything. Uh, okay, so this goes with that. Here we have the bread shield. This is something that convert. it's a shield for Arduino, as the name implies, that connects it to a breadboard, also as the name implies. So, let me see, where's a like regular Arduino? One second. Actually. 
So this little fella will connect to an Arduino and enables you to hook it up directly to a breadboard. And of course, I could have brought one over just a second ago and <laughs> didn't think of it. Yeah, cool. So that you can... <laughs> one second. So that you can connect it to a breadboard without making any changes. And all your pins will be there. No worries at all. I've just done this in a very tilty way. Oh no, breadboard isn't thick enough. There we go. Um, and you can still use whatever other shields you want as well. For example, this click relay board, uh, Microelectronica click board with a couple relays on it. Um, actually four relays total, but that just goes onto there. You can stack them as high as you want. Now I've got like, you know, my Arduino, I've got the, the uh, bread shield, and I've got this uh, Microelectronica click board, uh, breakout board, and then the two relay boards as well, which is fantastic. So, uh, and now I could, for example, hook up an LED to pin 13 and see it blink and stuff and still have all this other stuff plugged in. Let's pull that up as well. So all this stuff just came in at once. Well, uh, one of the big things that the creator points out is that usually if you want to use a breadboard with Arduino, you're going to have to use tons of jumper wires, and that's a huge pain in the butt. And also, the reason that I usually don't use breadboards is because the connections are so janky. Uh, like, usually I'll end up with problems somewhere in the circuit, and usually it's because I'm using a jumper wire that won't connect well, or the sockets are too loose for some reason, or the sockets are too tight and I can't get the wire in. Uh, it's a huge pain, and you have to find so many jumper wires, uh, and like try to remember which one is which based on the colors and stuff. It's just a huge pain, and so this makes it way easier. Look at this, you've got a little um, LCD connected to it, that uh, just uses a few little wires. Um, again, as mentioned before, you don't have to choose between the shields and the breadboards. You've got your full pinout as usual. Wait, there's a hole in the middle so you can see the Arduino? Oh, I guess not. That's fine. <laughs> um, I probably should have shown you the thing a little bit better before I piled all this stuff on top of it. Doop, doop, doop. Here's a real test as well. It's like, can I get this apart? without uh, bending the pins to <gasps> all the way to tomorrow. Yeah, cool. So here we go. Bread Shield V0.2 by Bao et al, 2019, Ames, Iowa, USA. This is really cool to see something out of Ames, actually. I've got some family out there. It's not usually regarded as a tech hub, but yeah, let's just say. For non-UNO boards, use these two pins as true A4, A5. Huh. So another point about this board is that you don't have to use it with an Arduino Uno. The creator mentions a few things about it uh, in these comparison tables on the page. So uh, between similar ones, there's the bread shield, which is this one, the Ardu shield, and the shield adapter. Uh, which are all sort of alternatives to this one. For example, the Ardu Shield uh, is just for the Uno, and it has this little arm, these two little arms that come off of it. Uh, oh, I guess you can use the Nano with it as well, actually. Oh, cool. But there are some other differences. For example, uh, oh, I think the bigger ones you can't necessarily use. And you can use uh, other Arduino families with it. Uh, it looks like it's much cheaper than the other options as well, which is pretty cool. Now, one other thing that they mentioned is auto alignment of headers for easy assembly. Um, this is, there's like a friction fit between the headers here and the whatever, um, between the header pads, the through holes. 
and whatever headers you would put through because of the way that they are arranged. Now this one is already soldered on so I can't quite see, but I believe it. Now one way that people often solve this problem is that they will stagger the um, the through holes so that like they're sort of offset like very slightly so that uh, even though the through hole each one individually is larger than the pin that goes through it, uh, they will provide enough friction to stably hold the pins upright. And this appears to be another option for that. <laughs> it looks like they've done it by making the through hole smaller so that it just fits the diameter of the pins. And there, that's where you get the friction fit. It's open hardware, yay! Um, and they're all ready to ship, so. Uh, oh yeah, the other fun thing about this is called, it's called Loser LLC. Uh, and it's founded by Forrest Chung Bao. The, I think the name comes from the fact that you have to lose, I think it's a quote by Steve Jobs. Let's check that out. Loser.rocks. <laughs> uh, remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. Steve Jobs. So I guess uh, it also stands for a lab of salient and exquisite research, but also, um, yeah, the idea that you... Sorry, I thought I'd lost my microphone. <laughs> the idea that you uh, shouldn't feel like you have something to lose by experimentation. I dig it. Yet yeah, both an Arduino shield and a philosophy, all in one. Next up, I think we have two more things to go. One of which is the Arduino... Oh, Arduino, the Onion Pro LTE, which is a cellular enabled version of the awesome Onion board. Ooh, look how this box unfolds. Onion.io slash get started. Right there. And why are we so dim? Hmm? Let's turn that up a bit. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, yeah, so let's pull this out. This is a tiny little Linux computer, which is can run on its own in the field. It's designed to be low power and to it, it has an accessible command line that you can run either from your computer's browser, it's got USB to serial, so you just plug it into your computer uh, and then uh, talk to it over your browser, or you can have it run separately just over SSH there's this whole pretty simple setup process where you plug it into power, connect to its Wi-Fi uh, access point, then use that to tell it which uh, AP to connect to in your actual office or house, and then it will connect to there, and you can SSH into it using the name of the thing on the board, at least that was the process a while ago, uh, and that makes it really easy to talk to. This one they responded to a ton of user feedback in order to make this the best board possible. Like, I'm always thrilled about on-off switches, <laughs> but also, oh, it's USB-C. I didn't notice that before. Uh, one of the cool things about this is that it has expansible uh, S micro SD card storage, so you can add more storage on your tiny single board computer. Very exciting. You've got your GPIO outs. You've got a lithium polymer battery connector so that you can charge it easily and leave it in the field and if you charge it through USB it'll charge that battery which is pretty exciting. So this is really designed to be friendly to environmental sensor applications that are de deployed in the field. Let's take a look at the project page. The Onion Omega 2 LTE. A 4G LTE and Wi-Fi connect- Oh yeah, it's still got Wi-Fi on it, by the way. In case you're really excited about the previous Onion boards, you can still do Wi-Fi on it. And it has uh, GNSS global positioning, so it knows where it is. Also very exciting. As they mentioned, it's smaller than a credit card. It's quite small. <laughs> and they've got all these- They've got a few examples for getting up and running with it, but you can also, yeah, you can always talk to it over USB serial. And that's where you're going to do the command line and everything else, which is kind of amazing. Uh, you, you open it up in your browser when you uh, connect to it, and then 
within your browser, you have a command line and a development IDE. Development IDE is uh, repetitive, but whatever. <laughs> Integrated development environment. So yeah, down here on the page they have this whole section on which things they improved based on which feedback. So people wanted portability and resilience, that's where you have the battery management. You have the command line access for easy configuration and debugging. You have the micro SD slot, as mentioned. You've got status LEDs so that you don't have to SSH into it. In order to get the status of it, you can just look at the thing, which is kind of great. You can tell whether it's plugged in, running on battery, whether the OS is booted, and whether it's connected to Wi-Fi or cellular, and whether it when it's transmitting and receiving cell data. Super cool. Oh, so yeah, this one comes preloaded with Linux operating system. Do, do, do. You need a USB-C cable and your computer. Yeah, fantastic. Browser-based setup wizard. I would do this right now, except that A, I don't have a SIM on me, and B, sometimes you have to actually disconnect from the uh, Wi-Fi network you're on, as I mentioned, in order to set it up, and I don't want to lose you. So. Uh, what I will say is that we, you could maybe use this with the Soracom uh, SIM, which is a SIM that's designed specifically for IoT applications. So it's like low bandwidth stuff, and uh, so it's also low power because of that. And we have a contest running on that right now! Fancy that! Uh, so that we've got a cellular IoT challenge. It is designed with a couple of other companies, but if you're interested in getting and exploring a number of options, you could get the Soricom Complete Starter Kit and try mashing that together with the Onion computer. And submissions for that close in nine days, so if you're on that already, then, then get on it. Otherwise, you have a, a short window, but you'll also be able to check out what people are building with the Soricom system and, and see what, what projects come out of this. There are a number of pre-existing, I think they're called docs and, and expansions. So the original uh, Onion boards were just the little, the little chippy guy. I should have brought one out, actually. Uh, and in order to get all the USB stuff and whatever, you would have to plug it into this expansion dock. And since then, they've released a number of other different options for hologram, for example. Hologram Wireless, you've got a relay expansion, there's a servo expansion with PWM control, an OLED, OLED expansion, and things like that. So there's all these other things that you can expand it with if you get one of their kits. And you can find those on onion.io, including a wireless LiDAR kit? Like, what? That's super cool. You probably, I don't know if you'd have enough bandwidth to do that over cellular and send you the data, but it could be really cool. Uh, oh yeah, we've done an unboxing and setup video before on these, so check out the Haxer channel for more onion goodness if you're curious and you can't get enough from this video, which is very, very fast. Here's a quick view into the browser-based onion OS, uh, including like the option to launch the terminal, the app manager, there's a time-lapse camera option. So yeah, this is like a demo that they include with it, which is very delightful. And I might end up using that for some reason as well. We'll see. I want to get it rolling, it, running on solar power is what I want. <laughs> and it's got these uh, this giant antenna for the GPS and LTE. So check that out. Pulse Electronics. Very snazzy with your matte black finish as usual. My favorite. 4G GNSS and 4G Div. I'm not sure what 4G Div is, but uh, maybe divided. But your little SIM card goes on the back there, and then here's the micro SD. Very exciting. Let's put it back in its little. Uh... Were you in here? Is that where you were? You are now. Dip, 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 dip. <laughs> I'm going to check for any quick comments before I do the last thing in this video. <laughs> ESP32. Yeah, someone says, ¿Qué estamos viendo? I, I, well, and walking you through it as I go, but I'll put the links in the description of this video after the video because I haven't yet been able to, um, like I, I couldn't see through the boxes. I didn't x-ray them, I didn't know what would be in the boxes, so I'll put the links again in the description after this, uh, but I'm also pulling up the product pages as we go, so you should be able to figure out from that. Um, hello Tiago, hello Jay. 
Imagine a mini real Baymax. Jay really wants to use the programmable air to make a, an inflatable Bay, Baymax like from Big Hero 6, and I totally support that. Very yes. Oh, oh, it was in this little uh, anti-ESD bag. Too late. Time to move on. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, yes! So what did I just say about solar? Uh, ugh. Forget that. Uh, the thing I just said about solar was that I'm obsessed with it. Well, I didn't say that, but uh, I am. And I want to make, for example, the onion thingamajig uh, solar, run off of solar power. Also, actually, one thing that I really want to do right now is I want to set up a persistent server to run IRC, which is an IRC client. <laughs> and uh, be able to log in and out of that in order to check whether there's any new IRC messages in the channels that I'm following because of um, talking to, I'm blanking on his name right now, Tim, Tim Mithro Ansel, right? Yeah, who created the Tomu at tomu.im, uh, which is a little USB development board. And it turns out that most of the answers that I seek for that live on the IRC channel on Freenode. So uh, I think it's just hashtag Tomu. And for the FOMU as well, the new FPGA one, it's just a little tiny board that sits inside your USB port. So I want to have make a persistent uh, server that will stay logged into IRC, and then I'll just be able to scroll back through if I uh, reattach that IRC window. Linux stuff! Anyway, so this is the Maker Power Solar Board, which is designed to make working with solar power way easier. Very exciting. Oh, it's a fuse. Ha! Huh. Good idea, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, look. Yeah, a fuse on board. And then you've got this giant inductor coil. Wow! Uh, this thing can handle a fair amount of power going through it. MPPT, solar power. Dan Coolio Designs, LLC. Uh, cool. What else, we get? what else does it say? Plus 7 to 18 amp hours AGM, 10 to 35 watts, 36 cell. Uh, so I guess those are its limitations. Here's the battery temperature monitor. Um, there's, this thing has actually its own logic for setting up a, a temperature monitor in the, uh, a, a graphical one. So here's a 12 volt battery out. Here's a solar panel in, <laughs> and here's a USB out as well, which will, I think, give you up to two amps. They said 10 watts at five volts, so that's gonna be two, two amps. And then some nice heavy duty cables with little wires. Uh, did they give us the male versions of these? Nope. Um, provide your own male ends to these wires. Oh, you know what? I bet the, the 12 volt battery would have its, its ones for that. Yeah, okay. You stick that into the screw terminals, and then I would take my panels. I've got some of these guys that I'm going to hook up. These are from Newark, actually. This is a 200 milliamp one, and this is a 100 milliamp one, and they're both 5 volts. And so I've got two of each, which makes 600 milliamps of solar power at full sun. Probably won't get that high, but we'll see. Um, and I would just hook all of those up in parallel to get the to add the amps together and get the five volts. Um, yeah. Although I'm not sure if this actually maybe this wants twelve volts. That might uh, that might not work. Anyway, so it says reversed battery will blow the fuse. So that's probably a good thing to have on there. It's probably good why they have this spare. My guess is that that arose through user testing. You don't just do that for funsies. Like that's definitely something where someone uh, someone made that happen. So this is not yet launched on Crowd Supply, but uh, you can go follow it. You can sign up and subscribe for updates. If you go to crowdsupply.com, I'll put the link in the description of this video, as I said, um, to receive updates and be notified when it goes live. 24 seven power for your remote projects. 12 volt operation. Pardon me. <laughs> Alright. Uses commonly available and inexpensive 25 to 35 watt 12 volt solar panels. So that's like vaguely um, 2 to 3 amps uh, and then 12 volts uh, solar panels. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. 
Yeah, uh, charge temperature compensation, which is interesting. Temperature sensor monitors the battery temperature and adjusts charge parameters to optimally charge the battery while protecting it from life-shortening overcharge conditions. Fantastic. Um, which is definitely something like, if you just hook up uh, a charger direct or panels directly to a battery, there's, you know, it won't automatically shut off when the, when the battery reaches its maximum. There is the aforementioned 10 watt 5 volt power supply available from that USB type A socket I pointed out. So you can plug and play with many devices or from a 0.1 inch header for direct connection. Oh, where's that? Is that right next to the USB? Where does that go? Fused battery. Maybe that's. Oh, no, that's. Uh, huh. Where is that? Oh, I guess here. Yeah, so uh, there's also a set of 0.1 inch headers here. And the way those are set up, you have SDA and SCL uh, as well. And then you also have alert and night. And that comes uh, up a little bit later in the description. So there's night only mode where it automatically enables the system only at night. Which I assume has to do with if you want to build some like um, path lighting or something like that for your outdoor garden. So have solar powered lighting or something like that. The I squared C interface with those SDL, uh, the clock and data pins. Oh, look at these screw terminals. They're not screws, they're like little. Huh. I haven't seen these before. They're different. Um, they probably are some special thing that people use for batteries and is super heavy duty. But um, then we also have a little jumper that you would presumably solder together to get that night mode. It's 5 volt power here. You've got your status LED, very nice. Any other cool stuff on here? Let's take one last look at the info sheet. Um, there's a watchdog system so you can ensure reliability by power cycling when the attached system crashes or hangs. This is something that's big with, I guess, some batteries or phones and things will stop charging if it goes below a certain uh, amount of charging. And it could be for other things as well, but yeah. So for remote sensing and control devices, for example, that uh, Onion LTE thingy-majig. What if I had to come up with a project to put all of this together? The bread shield might be the toughest thing, unless I had them talking to each other. So if I had a local station with the bread shield doing some kind of a notification thing, um, maybe I could get that to talk to the programmable air, and that would be my little uh, wacky waving inflatable guys. And then I would have my remote sensor set up, which has the solar charging and the Onion LTE board, and the, I guess maybe a couple of Tiny Picos like hooked up to it with other sensors or something? I don't know. Uh, tell me what you would make with all of this together, because it'd be really interesting. You've got uh, remote photography applications, utility functions such as USB charging, night lighting, or remote water pumping. Um, you can do remote sculpture and art installations, and things like a Raspberry Pi server or router. Haha, <laughs> that's exactly what I was talking about doing for IRC. Oh yeah, and here's the dashboard application uh, with the solar charger information. So you've got battery info, the solar info, the charge info, and little graphs for checking it out over time. And they have a demo project, which is a remote webcam. Very cute. And that's just running off of a Raspberry Zero. It looks like Maybe not a zero W because it's got a little dongle in there. It's probably Wi-Fi, unless it's Bluetooth or something. Um, then you have the solar charger thing. You've got that little camera on the right there. There. <laughs> and uh, just underneath there is where that little dongle is that I'm talking about. And then on the top you have the solar charger thingy. Then underneath you have your bank of cells. I'm learning so much cool stuff about solar power lately. 
like why some of them are blue and why some are black and why some of them have this beautiful sort of scintillating faceted uh, appearance, but that'll be for another day. For now, let's go back through all that we've learned today. We learned about the Maker Power Solar Kit, which is this last one. We learned, and that's, looks like this. I'll hold them up again. <laughs> looks like this. Obviously, you see it right there. We've got Programmable Air, the hardware kit for experimenting with pneumatics. That's very exciting as well. We're gonna make a little med meditation guide and all kinds of other cool stuff. We've got the Onion um, Omega 2 LTE computer, single board computer, which is swathed in bubble wrap for no reason. Goes this way up. Talk to it uh, over through your browser or over SSH, it runs Linux, fantastic. You've got, oh, not this one, <laughs> but we've got the tiny Pico as well. Um, right here, the super tiny guy with the LiPo battery connectors. That's a breakout for the ESP32. Very adorable. And we also have the bread shield, which, where did that go? Bread shield, come back. Hmm, maybe it's, oh, here it is. Yes, it's because I clicked on loser.rocks. <laughs> the bread shield, bringing Arduino to breadboard with no jumper wires at all, and it's compatible with different varieties of Arduino and ever so gorgeous. Check all of those out on crowdsupply.com. Thank you so much, Daryl. I'm gonna have a huge amount of fun with this and I promise I will publish stuff soon. Uh, they also sent us the Stereo Pie where I had a huge amount of fun building a 3D stereoscopic uh, light painting camera for long exposures. Very cool. Um, all right, cheers. Have an awesome rest of your Fundum Friday. I will see you probably Tuesday actually, uh, but maybe Monday, we'll see. It's Memorial Day in the US, but um, Sometimes I just can't stay away. Sometimes I'm here on the weekend. We'll find out. I'll see you soon. Hack on.